Kristen Wiig is no shrinking violet. The Saturday Night Live alum is equal parts fearless feminist, girl next door, and Hollywood heavy hitter. What else does she have up her sleeve? And how did she get to be such a big name? Keep watching to find out. The daughter of an artist and a Lake Marina manager, Kristen Wiig was born in Canandaigua, New York on August 22, 1973. When she was nine years old, her parents got divorced and she later moved to Rochester, New York with her mother and older brother Eric. It was in her new hometown that she found herself navigating some rocky teenage territory. As she revealed to Interview magazine, I probably lived more of a rock star life when I was 15. I got in trouble a fair amount. I cared more about hanging out and skipping school than studying. I definitely ran with a pack of hoodlums, that's for sure. Wig's rebellious adolescent stage also included underage drinking at a Grateful Dead concert and smashing potted plants on a neighbor's porch. As she told The Guardian, There were suspensions. That's the past. With her penchant for creating zany characters, one might think that Kristen Wiig is the ultimate exhibitionist. But it turns out that her life-of-the-party persona is actually an on-screen facade and a testament to her acting ability. As she told Interview Magazine in 2011, I never considered myself to be funny, maybe because socially I can be a little shy sometimes. I just didn't think that you could be both. She also admitted in that interview that she was nervous to appear on SNL's famous Weekend Update segment because she couldn't hide there the way that she could in a group sketch setting. She also noted that she would rather appear behind a fictional personality than be herself in the spotlight. As she put it, I enjoy being characters rather than myself. If I had to get up and talk in front of a group of people just as myself, I would be terrified. I get a little anxious, I guess. But if I'm on stage in front of hundreds of people and I'm a character doing a monologue, I'm totally fine. Are you okay? Once again, you seem, you seem really nervous, but you're doing fine. Sorry. I'm usually calm, cool, and collected. After high school, Wig headed to college, where she was an art major at the University of Arizona in Tucson. She took a theater performance class to fulfill a requirement, and though she was initially terrified by it, she ended up really enjoying it. And thanks to an encouraging professor, she decided to pursue this newfound passion. With a year left in college, she dropped out and moved to Los Angeles, unbeknownst to her parents. As she told the New York Times in 2008, Of course, when I got there, I was like, what am I doing? I have no experience and all the women here are models. She enrolled in an acting class and as she explained to the Times, It was one of those very method classes where you have to sit for an hour with your eyes closed and pretend you're drinking like hot soup. Suffice it to say, it wasn't her thing. Luckily, though, Wick found her place with The Groundlings, an improvisation program that boasts alumni like Will Ferrell and Maya Rudolph. She started taking classes and eventually snagged a spot in the coveted Sunday Company. While Wig had talent and ambition to spare, she couldn't survive on wit and will alone. In her early 20s, before she really broke through in showbiz, she bounced from odd job to even odder job. This included working at anthropology, dabbling in floral design, and even manning a hot dog cart. Perhaps the weirdest gig ever was one that she never actually had the opportunity to start. Right before her fortuitous move to Los Angeles, she was supposed to sketch patients before and after pictures for a plastic surgery practice. But then she had a moment of self-realization the day before that job was slated to begin, so she packed her Jetta and left for the West Coast. Like many up-and-coming comedians, she still had to find a way to pay the bills, though. In a 2011 interview with the Los Angeles Times, she recounted waiting tables at the Universal Pictures Commissary and the weird encounters it led to. As she put it, A couple times I've seen executives and I'm like, how do I know you? Oh, I used to give you Cobb salad and Arnold Palmer's, and I had a tie and khaki pants on. Wig made her Saturday Night Live debut on the November 12, 2005 episode after surviving an intimidating audition for a panel that included Lorne Michaels and Tina Fey. As she told NPR, It was the most terrifying thing I've ever done to this day, because I knew it would just be me on stage for five minutes, and they were very clear that you had five minutes. Throughout her time on the show, she played many characters, and one of the most beloved was the overzealous Target Lady. Wig told NPR about the origin of that character when she revealed, 
I liked how happy she was about pretty much everything. I was actually in a Target and the woman who was at the register, she just said something in a voice that struck me. After seven seasons on SNL, Wig made her final appearance as a member of the cast on May 19, 2012. In an interview with The Guardian about a year later, she admitted that she missed the creative energy and pulse-quickening spontaneity of it all. As she put it, "...it's like your brain is in the best shape ever, and then when you leave, you feel a little like your mind is slowly dulling, because you're not having to fix things and solve puzzles and create on a minute-to-minute -minute basis." Kristen Wiig is a vegetarian who eats plenty of tofu and soy and drinks a lot of water and cranberry juice. But she's not overly strict about it, as she allows herself a weekly cheat day to eat whatever she wants, as she told Women's Health in 2008. It's good because it helps you stay on track the rest of the week. In the beginning, I ate anything I could see, but it's funny, the more you do it, the less you end up splurging. When Wig does feel the urge to treat herself, she'll turn to dark chocolate peanut M&Ms and lemon cupcakes from Buttercup Bake Shop in New York City. She's also health-conscious and wellness-aware in general, as she's also a yoga enthusiast. During her time on SNL, she'd take private classes with friends and squeeze in cardio sessions with friends in Central Park and along the Hudson River. Most actors who have gotten intimate on camera will tell you that it's not so much hot and heavy as much as it is cringy and awkward. Kristen Wiig, for one, has admitted that filming her over-the-top bedroom scene in Bridesmaids with John Hamm was awkward to say the least, and that was mostly because of their real-life friendship. As she recounted to Access Hollywood, "...I remember it was our last day of shooting and I mean, it's so silly. We're like, how else can he throw me around?" That multi-position scene took an eyebrow-raising 12 hours to film. Ham, who wore little more than a loincloth, was equally embarrassed. As he put it, "...it's not a lot of fun rolling around in front of 30 or 40 crew members in a flesh-colored thong. But we did have a lot of fun. We had a lot of jokes and a lot of laughs, and I'm sure a lot of that will end up on the DVD somewhere." Wig has appeared on The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon multiple times, but rarely as herself. Instead, she's shown up in character as the likes of Michael Jordan, Peyton Manning, Harry Styles, Jojo from The Bachelorette, and Daenerys Targaryen from Game of Thrones. If you've seen any of these clips, you know how hilarious they are, but you might not know that these bogus interviews are totally improvised. In a 2017 interview with Esquire, Wig revealed that she arrives at the show 15 minutes early to find the costume that's provided. She also noted, "...there's no reason to be nervous because you don't have anything you have to say, and it really forces you to be in the moment." When Wig finally appeared on the show as herself in 2017, Fallon challenged her to share one of her famous old-time cocktail recipes. Without missing a beat, she flexed those improv muscles once again and invented the ingredients needed to whip up a sea cloud, which included salt water from the ocean, three half oranges, rum, and milk. And it's served uh, lukewarm. <laughs> it was! A lukewarm cocktail. Because they're like, on the sea and you don't have, they sea, don't have they don't ice. They don't have ice on the ship. From 2005 to 2009, Kristen Wiig was married to actor Hayes Hargrove. Details surrounding the demise of their relationship are scarce, but there's little doubt it left Wig feeling dubious about marriage as an institution. In 2011, she told Stella Magazine that she had no plans to tie the knot a second time. As she put it, "...I probably won't ever get married again. It's not something that I would want to do." As a female role model, she also wanted to make sure that she wasn't sending the wrong message about women and marriage while starring in Bridesmaids. As she described it, I think women put that pressure on themselves, maybe even more than society does. But if you're the single girl at the wedding, you know someone is going to ask you when you're going to get married. Despite her skepticism, though, in 2019, Wig got engaged to actor-producer-director Abby Rothman after three years of dating. Like Wig, Rothman is an alum of The Groundlings. And he's also a yogi. He even plays a character named Ogden the Inappropriate Yoga Guy on the YouTube series of the same name. In January 2020, Wig and Abby Rothman welcomed twins via surrogacy. After three years of enduring the highs and lows of IVF, Wig was more than ready to privately settle down with her sweet babies. 
News about her motherhood didn't break for a few months, and the timing was in a way fortuitous. Because shortly thereafter, the COVID-19 pandemic made quarantining at home necessary. But it hasn't all been coos and giggles in the Wig Rothman household. Unsurprisingly, raising two little ones has proven to be a little bit exhausting for the new mom. She told In Style, I can't wait to see them every morning. It's not all just lying around and smiling at babies, though. Obviously, some days I get more sleep than others, but it is what it is, and it's freaking awesome. Before the news was made official via an Us Weekly exclusive in June 2020, Wig hinted about her life development when she appeared on SNL on Mother's Day weekend and gushed about her own mom during her monologue. I'm so thankful for all the things she's taught me, preparing me to be a mom myself. Things like breastfeeding. Babies love that chicken. In Wonder Woman 1984, Kristen Wiig plays the role of Barbara Minerva, an archaeologist who becomes obsessed with collecting treasures held by the title superhero. At the 2019 Comic-Con experience, director Patty Jenkins gushed to the audience about Wiig's dynamic performance, as she declared, we were super fans of Kristen, and we love how funny she is, but also I've been a huge admirer of what a great actress she is for a long time. So when we needed someone to go all the way from one end of the spectrum of being funny, sweet Diana's friend, all the way to a totally different place, we knew that Kristen Wiig would kill it. And she went beyond our wildest dreams. Indeed, Wig makes a drastic transformation in the film as she becomes Minerva's villainous alter ego, Cheetah. Who knew that this former teenage rebel would one day be sparring with Wonder Woman? It's like a dream. Right? You're in a major superhero movie. Like, this is major. I'm so excited. Wait, what was it like? <laughs> Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more list videos about your favorite stars are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.